Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Recently, the 4th Autonomous Air Vehicles Seminar was conducted between Jan 6th and 7th by DRDO and Design Division of Aeronautical Society of India. During the seminar, Dr. Kota has proposed for a weaponized version of SWIFT. SWIFT, as we all know, is a one-ton scaled-down model of Ghatak UCAV. Ghatak is going to be the weaponized version with weight around 15 to 16 ton. Now, talking about SWIFT, it has a wingspan of 5 meters and length of 4 meters and it will have a range of 200 kilometers, service ceilings of 6 kilometer and endurance of 1 hour. On 1st July 2022, the UCAF took its first flight at Aeronautical Test Range ATR in Chitradurga, Karnataka. At present, SWIFT is powered by NPO Saturn 36MT turbofan engine. The plan is also to replace it by Manik small turbofan engine STFE at later stage, which is under development. The UCAF in its internal weapon bay can carry SAW smart anti-airfield missiles. It can be used inside the enemy's territory to conduct precision strike and suppression of enemy air defense mission. They can also operate using SWAN drone algorithm, which will be lethal against any air defense system. Now, just like Turkey's Kizlema unmanned fighter jet, a new unmanned fighter jet has been proposed with all up weight of 5 to 6 tons. The fighter jet will be powered by 25 kN turbofan engine HTFE25 under development by HL. This engine is again a 25 kN thrust class turbofan engine and it can be used for a 5 ton weight class aircraft in single engine configuration or 9 ton class aircraft in twin engine configuration. The engine has thrust to weight ratio of 5.56 and maximum flight altitude of 11 km. HL had started the development of engine in 2013-14 and a flight worthy engine for certification is expected in next 5 years. Now AD has also proposed to deliver 3 systems this year which includes Tapas, Abhyas and Archer. At present, 6 Tapas UAV is under production by HL with the help of ADE for user evaluation trials. Tapas will go for the Center of Military Airworthiness and Certification for its airworthiness by checking its loads factor, safety and airframe design. Though Tapas is primarily used for surveillance, it can also carry weapons. It's pre-designed to carry certain weapon and can be converted into armed platform. Though the original completion date of the project was 2016, it has been now extended to 2023. The government has made it clear that there will be no further extension. The requirement of 76 Tapas drones has been drafted for tri services, which include 60 for Army, 12 for Air Force, and 4 for Navy. Talking about Archer, it is a spin off of Rustam 1 with upgraded avionics architecture. It's going to be short range weaponized UAV equivalent to Hermes 550 class UAVs. In 2021, DRDU has released an expression of interest to build four prototypes of Archer with participation of private players. The first Archer UAV will be available within a year of contract being awarded with three additional prototypes scheduled for testing and flight certification. The tender anticipates a first manufacturing order of 20 units. The four prototypes are in advanced stages of development. A single engine twin boom that is SETB is also under development by ADE which is going to be a male UCAV in twin boom single rear engine pusher configuration. It derives its design and many features from ADE's Tapas UAV. However, it will be a bigger UAV with all up weight of 4 ton. It is also being designed to carry weapons and the UCAF can carry a payload of almost 300 kilograms. ADA has also planned a teaming of manned and unmanned platforms using two naval LCA and two UAVs which will be held off the coast in Goa. This was today's update. Please let us know your views on this in comment section. If you like the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. With this, 
I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind. We'll soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.